Hello my friends, in this video we will be exploring the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits, GD match results, and even haplogroups of a Stone Age man from Argentina, from this location right here. Uh, now, in terms of the time period he lived in, he lived in 56 to 53 centuries before the Common Era. This is deep, deep into the Stone Age, even in uh, some parts of Eurasia, but in, in the Americas, this is definitely the Stone Age. And in terms of the haplogroups, his Y DNA was Q1B, and his mitochondrial lineage was A2. Now, my trait predictor determines his Y DNA is Q, and it doesn't determine it further than Q because, unfortunately, there is not enough data in the file to make an accurate guess based on. Right, so there is a couple of things that I'm going to discuss in this video. First, we're going to discuss his blood type, so we're going to score all past all of this, which I would love to talk about, but uh, people don't really appreciate that. When I talk about this stuff, so it looks like his blood type is likely O or A. Uh, unfortunately, this is not a very precise prediction. It could be definitely a lot more precise than this. But from the data we have, his blood type is likely o, o or A. Unfortunately, this is not that much data. But we do know for sure his blood type is not AB and it's probably not B either. Uh, in terms of the biomarkers, let's look at that real quick. So it looks like he's got a below average level of vitamin D which is not that good, a below average level of LDL cholesterol, which is definitely very good, a below average uh, average level of HDL cholesterol, which is kind of okay, not that bad, he's he's not in a dangerous category, uh, in a danger, dangerous, um, da dangerous score for any of these traits. He's scoring a slightly above average level for glucose levels, which is not that good. He's scoring a slightly above average level of hemoglobin, uh, once again, still very much in the in the um, uh, favorable favorable zone, still de definitely no no danger here, and he's got pretty much spot on average blood pressure, which is okay, and he's got pretty much spot on average level of iron in the blood, which is once again uh, nothing too surprising or concerning about this result. Uh, let's look at what he scores for the ethnic calculator results. So here he is actually with my trait predictor. He is actually closest to Turkic individual UGU zero zero one. There is definitely a connection between the Turkic people and the Native Americans. Uh, it's it's a very well known connection, both from ancient North Eurasian and Eastern Eurasian uh, ancestry. And Native Americans do resemble Turkic people in everything from phenotype to even their languages have some similarities to Turkic languages. Uh, what he scores with Gedrosia uh, Gedrosia's Iran Neolithic K6 is this. So as you can see, he is scoring a mixture of East Asian and various uh, European or West Eurasian components. For example, here he's scoring 17.5% Western hunter-gatherer and 13.9% Iranian Neolithic and 2.4% ancestral South Eurasian. Um, he's scoring these components instead of ancient North Eurasian because there is no ancient North Eurasian population reference group here with Kidrosia DNA. And he is closest to Pima. Uh, Pima are a Native American group. By the way, I, I was just right now talking about similarities between Native Americans and Turkic people. The second closest, closest group after Turks, uh, after Pima, is Altaians, who are Turkic. Followed by that is Clovis, which is another Native American. Followed by that is Kyrgyz, which is once again a Turkic group. Followed by that are Kalmyks. Once again, Kalmyks might not be a Turkic group. I'm not sure. They might be Mongolic. Yeah. So uh, there is definitely some similarity between inhabitants of uh, the east of Eurasia and um, and um, Native Americans. Uh, east of the Eur Eurasian steppes, I meant, not necessarily eastern portion of Eurasia. So let's look what he scores for the polygenic risk scores for predisposition to various illnesses. It looks like he's got nothing relevant was found for stroke. All right. It looks like he's got slightly below average level of likelihood of male pattern hair loss, which is really good, but also kind of expected for somebody who's not a European. It looks like he's got a uh, slightly above average level of atrial fibrillation, which is kind of unfortunate. Nothing relevant was found for DVT. It looks like he's got a slightly above average level of bipolar disorder, type 1. And he's got a slightly above average um, risk score for schizophrenia. It looks like he's got a below average risk score for type 2 diabetes, a slightly above average risk score for Alzheimer's, a below average risk score for multiple sclerosis, uh, zero risk variance for breast cancer, zero risk variance for testicular cancer, definitely really healthy. Uh, zero risk variance for celiac disease, once again, really healthy. Uh, nothing for GSS, nothing for Crohn's, uh, nothing was found for Reifenstein's, and nothing 
no risk clients for Parkinson's. Definitely very healthy individual. Uh, let's go ahead and see what he scores for the phenotype with my Nashakot tool. So with my Nashakot tool, and this is really surprising. I was actually surprised to see this. He's scoring, scoring brown or hazel eyes. Um, brown eyes, 40% likelihood. Hazel eyes, 32% likelihood. Uh, is it because he actually has brown or hazel eyes, or is it because there is not enough data in the file? Well, let's explore that result a little bit, a little bit more in depth. Uh, for hair color, most likely he has black hair. Uh, but there is also a likelihood for dark brown or light brown or even dark blonde hair here as well. We will explore that uh, portion of the result a little bit later. And for skin color, he is scoring all over Mediterranean skin. All of these groups, um, all of these results are extremely uncharacteristic for a Native American and very characteristic for somebody from, say, Europe. So uh, what caused that? Well, also straight hair. I, I'm, I missed that part. We should have talked about it a little bit more. But what caused this result? And it's interesting that he actually doesn't have any genotypes for BEH2. So we don't know whether or not he has light color variants in BEH2, but he does have blue eye haplotype 1, and he does not have blue eye haplotype 3. From this data alone, having BEH1 and not having BEH3, you could assume that this person is quite light. I mean, is 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 definitely uh, the result of brown or hazel eyes is definitely very appropriate here. Uh, Judging from what we know about his ancestry, him being a Native American, we can assume he probably does not have blue eye haplotype 2, although it is at very low frequencies found in Native Americans. But he does have blue eye haplotype 1. He has two light color variants here, actually. So definitely he is among the lighter, uh, lighter pigmented uh, Native Americans in terms of every trait. Hair color, eye color, skin color. Um, okay. Now let's go ahead and check what he scores for the phenotype oracle. This might be interesting to see as well. And the closest phenotype to him is this, which is kind of like a lighter version of like typical Cynid or uh, East Asian, followed by this, which is actually a European phenotype. It's a Volgiad phenotype, followed by this, which is once again a European phenotype. Uh, because of him scoring so light, so much of the light color, him scoring so light for the eye color and hair color, He's actually getting these these kinds of results for the mixed mode oracle, kind of like a light population with a darker East East Asian population in his results, which is kind of interesting as well. And in the tw twelve way oracle, we even see this population figurating, followed by this eight point thirty three percent, eight point thirty three percent, forty one point sixty seven percent. This sixteen point sixty eight. 87% this, 8% this, and once again, 8% this. So if you morph all of these into one, uh, according to the percentages that you see here on the screen, you would get something that looks like this person. But once again, this kind of a result uh, may not be precisely reliable, once again, because of the uh, because of the lack of genotypes for BEH2. That's the, that's the most... Uh, genotypes for BEH2 are the most re revealing genotypes you can have in terms of coloration. Well, thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And once again, you can download this file from in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.